Hello and welcome to the Translator 6 overview video. We're going to go through really quickly the major features of Translator 6 and mainly the interface that you see when you first start the program up. Um, let's start on a real simple basis. Uh, we see we've started the program up and there's probably a whole bunch of things that we've done in preferences and setup uh, in previous sessions that that uh, have helped us uh, uh, with certain things in the past. But let's start fresh, so I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to exit Translator 6, and I'm going to start it with the Shift button pressed. And it asks you, do you want to erase or store to user preferences? Yes, I'm going to trash the preferences. And I have to agree to the end user license agreement again. And I do so, and Translator 6 starts up from the very beginning and just goes and everything is the defaults. Okay, so let's start to look at Translator 6 main uh, places on the screen. The first thing is the container pane, which is on the left side here. Then we have the object list, which is on the right here, but there's four things on the right. There's the object list, there's the instrument screen, the instrument view, there's the sample view and the batch converter. The batch converter actually is pretty esoteric and it's probably going to go away and be a separate little area, uh, but we'll explain it anyway sooner or later. Again, we're going to go really fast through these things. We're not going to explain them. They're all separate videos for the different types of functions. So uh, one more thing before we get to the uh, first section of the interface, and that's the ability to dock these things. When we've got the object list up and we click detach, there the object list comes off of the interface and allows you to just use it as a separate window. This is really handy when you have dual monitors or even triple monitors. You could put the different things in different monitors and don't have to have them in one place. Uh, you can do any of the screens like this. So if you choose to have the sam sample view and detach that, you can detach that. So whatever you control here on the container pane, you'll notice it changes that. Um, let's do that. And there's the, there's the sample. So you could do this pretty easily. See, there's the samples that come up. Okay, let's retach these. You just all you do is you click on the close things of those menus, and let's go in to explain the first part of the interface. And the first part of the interface is the control uh, is the container pane. The idea here is that anything you select on this side shows up. The con the objects within that container show up in the object list or the instrument view. So you can see. Under our favorites thing, we have a folder called video material, and then we have all these things. The container pane has these main elements. It shows everything on the desktop, shows everything in your documents folder. It shows your local and external drives, which in this is this is our main boot drive, and then we have a, a compact flash card, uh, which called no name, and we're doing some Roland XV50 work there. There's a drive, actually this is our boot drive, it's called the Snow Leopard drive, um, when we're usually working. We're actually working in Le Leopard here, which this is the boot, boot drive, but we've got an external USB drive called that, and then there's a network drive called Library Drive, which is on another computer on our network. Favorites is a nice handy feature to where you can just put your favorite folders under that and you do this by add to favorites and you choose whatever it is and and that way you don't have to go drilling around the one of the things about translator 6 is it tries to be very handy for you to make things easy for you this is proprietary drive so if we have a proprietary drive uh, or a proprietary disk on our computer it'll show up under that um, right now i'm putting it in sonic cd in and it will soon show us, the Mac will soon complain and say, hey, I can't, I don't know what to do with this CD. So let's wait for it to do that. It should come up anytime. It's going to come. There it is. 
and we just go ignore we don't inject it we just go ignore and refresh the one thing you should know about the translator is that it doesn't automatically respond to events and stuff like that you have to refresh it manually so there's our Insonic CD and we can see all the folders on them etc etc now a uh, nice little thing before we move on is that we how do you eject this thing you can right click on there and here's our right click menus and we can eject this um, uh, let me show you some other things before we move on which is handy uh, you can get info of this in Sonic CD and it's going to show us some specific things about the CD in a second there it is. You can set the label to it. Obviously on a CD you can't, but it says how much is free, what kind it is, the capacity. You can create a virtual drive. We'll get into that in a second. You also can create a listing, which is a text file that shows everything that's on the drive. Okay, let's get out of that. Um, one thing I want to show you first also is to create a virtual drive. Now a lot of times with CDs you want to make images of the CDs. So, an easy way of doing this is just to say create virtual drive, copy the entire drive, and you create that, and you say, okay, I want to call it that. Well, I won't go and do it now, but that's how you do it. Okay, now what virtual drives are, are essentially our uh, name of uh, name of images of CDs and hard drives and stuff like that. And when we're doing videos here, we'd rather work out virtual drives because it's much, much faster. And if you have a whole bunch of different uh, CDs of Roland and Akai and Emu and stuff like that, we highly recommend making virtual drives of all those because then you can just deal with them uh, separately yourself. And you can see we've got an Akai, the Akai interactive strings. We've got some Emacs things. We have Insonic, and we have Kurzweil, that takes six CD, some Roland things, even some Seclavier things. So, then we have lookups, that's not in Translator yet, you can, uh, the, but the idea is to search different areas and it'll show up as lookups. So that's the, uh, the, that's the container pane. There's, there's more to it also. You refresh at the top of it here, and then as soon as it's done refreshing. Actually, let's uh, let's uh, eject the Insonic CD so it doesn't get in our way. So you can't see it here, but the CD is uh, ejecting out of our MacBook Pro. And boom, there it's, it's gone. Okay, um, you can uh, disable any of these categories by clicking show, and you can say, oh, I don't want to see the desktop area or I don't want to see the lookups area, or I don't want to see the documents area, that sort of thing. So that's handy. Um, another thing you can do is that instead of looking at the whole thing, you can just uh, narrow in on a certain folder. So let's go, and I just want to see the things in 5702, which is uh, area for us. So, so now you don't have all this big, big stuff here, and you just have the contents of this folder, and you can look all over it and see what's there. Um, you can sh go back and show full again. And then you can also, instead of drilling down, you can make it easier by just saying, I want to go in here and I want to go in here. So then it's going to automatically drill. It's the same thing here, except it just drilled all the way into that folder and you can see the folder in there all these independence programs um, you can also filter what you see by selecting okay I just want to see folders or just contact instruments and stuff like that so that's really handy okay now let's go on to the object list and the object list is over here on the right and again as we said before it just shows whatever you click on the container pane it shows the contents of whatever you've selected in the container pane. So the battery two folder, guess what? We show a battery thing. If I select the battery two thing, it shows, the, it automatically switches to the instrument view and then you see all that, but you can also switch to the object list. Um, it also is handy that it, it, as you can see, this battery two has a whole bunch of bad references. It's, in, it's referencing to somewhere else, not 
all the samples that are in the sample folders. And it's handy, and it tells you it's a bad reference, but it does tell you what the battery file contains. Now here are all the things, and you can select a wave and have it play in the wave player down here. Uh, you can filter what you see here. Let's say you only want to see uh, EXS files. Well, hey, there's no EXS files in there, but there's EXS files in here, so you only see the EXS files. So that's handy when you have a, it's, uh, folders that have a whole bunch of mixed things. And you can just say, okay, go back to all, and you can see there's folders in there and such. Um, another handy thing you can do is that you can, by clicking this, when you double click on this, it'll automatically drill down for you when you've got that clicked. You can also press down shift when you're doing that type of stuff. So I'm pressing shift right now, so I'm gonna click deep bass and there's all those things here. If I didn't press shift, I double click on it and it would bring up bulk export because that's how you translate. Actually, we just kind of didn't talk about the main feature of the object list is that if I select dance click kit and click translate, that's how you translate, which is the main, that's what you're going to be using translator for. This brings up the master translation dialog as you can see here. Okay, let's, uh, let's looking at, look at filtering. Um, let's say I just want to see, I had a whole bunch of things in here and I just want to see things that say guitar on it. Oh, type in guitar and guess what happens? Anything that just says guitar. If I clear it out, then like that. Uh, if I did bass, then I just see bass. And of course you can clear it by clicking on that button. Um, another thing you can do is click on this edit window here and it shows this, you only want to see these things or select all. Another handy thing you can do, and let's, uh, I had this set up to do this properly, is that you can rename things from the object list. So there is this folder that we just called So What, and by clicking it after, so, let's see, actually what you have to do, preference, and you have to uncheck disallow and naming because we don't want people un renaming things by accident. So we select on that, we go Henry, and it's called Henry. So that's easy enough to do. And you can do that on proprietary disks like Akai and Roland and Insonics and things like that. Okay, let's move on to the instrument view. And let's go to our Roland CD and let's go to the orchestra volume two and then you can see all the patches and all these brass things really handy. I'm going to select the uh, chorus trumpet and it, there's your instrument view. You can see all the different samples that span over the ranges here. And by the way, if you don't want to make it go to automatically this, just select that and it will go to, the, it will select the object list and it'll tell you what is in the patch or what's in the instrument that you're doing. So the chorus trumpet, let's go back to the instrument view. Now you can audition this, which is really handy. All you have to do is click load, and there it's loaded. I've got a MIDI keyboard hooked up to this, and oop, something I gotta do first. When I trashed the preferences, it erased a lot of these things. So I have to say MIDI in, the MIDI sport here, and then that's the output. So that's handy. Uh, you can zoom in. You can get a better view of everything. Or you can zoom back out and see everything. Okay, um, you can also, you've got a list here that'll show you, oh, there's the name and then uh, low key, high key, velocity, root keys and everything like that. 
but if you don't want to see it, you don't have to, so you just can take that out. So that's the instrument screen, or instrument view as it's called here. Um, the sample view, um, you don't really have to use this because it just kind of detaches it, but you can you can play individual samples. You okay? I'm going to select this French horn. You can say it even loops it, and you show all, you can see all the specific information here. You can see the name, the loop, the start, and these are the samples: loop start, loop end, loop length. Sample rate, bits, the root key, what the format is, channels, total samples, the byte size, the low key, high key, low velocity, and high velocity. And again, you can do this on anything. Let's go to a Giga instrument. Let's, let's have some fun and do the men's choir. This is from Voices of Apocalypse. takes a while because there's a lot of samples in this one. This is about 900 megs. So there it all is. And let's do the, let's do a uh oh one. There it is. Uh. Also another thing I didn't show this, but you can select autoplay. So whenever you select it, uh. I was clicking the rewind button so you can you can also click on the different areas so your ability to audition these is really really easy so again you can see I'm selecting different parts of the area here but you can also do this in the object list as you can see so you can see how easy that is. Uh, the batch converter, I'll just show that really quick. Um, what this is for is taking different elements from different areas of your disk and then just converting them all at once. And again, you don't need to do this that much because you can easily bulk convert a single folder, which is usually where everything is anyway, by just double clicking on a folder here. And of course you get the bulk export thing and you can say, okay, any these, click it and go to these different formats and such. So you don't really need that often, but if you do, you just go, okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to do this entire folder. Or the, I'm gonna do this, this uh, file actually. And there it is, and you can say, okay, this is the file type, this is where I want it to go. Um, you have a whole bunch of different options here. Okay, let's look through the top menu here. You can see File, Edit, View, Operations, Window, and Help. File, you can translate. You usually don't use this, you just use the button. Um, view has some things. Uh, let's go to uh, the object list and hide the file filter so you can see more. Show it. Um, show Instrument Player. This is actually really handy and, and I don't know if um, I don't know if most people know about it, but this just shows the instrument player. Everything that we've played in here, even from other sessions, is can, you can load instantly in here. So here's a Crotales thing off a, a CD that we had, and I'm going to play it with the MIDI keyboard here. Or this less pad. trumpet and the chorus trumpet that we did earlier and there is a now shows you that we can play samples on translator as well as translate it which is pretty handy let's uh, this up a little bit 
Okay, uh, there's the root folder go to and show folds that you saw in the container pane. And also the refresh is the refresh button does the same thing as before. The operations menu um, create a virtual drive. So our, this is the, uh, the compact flash thing we have. So we would use that. All, all, uh, uh, all virtual drives have to be in the images folder, which is a folder in application data. And we have a little shortcut. So when you have open images folder, you just open it up and you can see the path where it is. It's our us, boot drive, users, my name, library, application support, chicken systems, translator six, and the images folder. You notice that I can put an alias in there and that's, that's how I do, we do things because we just don't want to put all the files in this folder itself. So most commonly you'll, uh, you'll alias it to this images folder, which is just in the root of the boot drive. Uh, you don't have to have all these folders, but uh, we do that just for, uh, uh, for organizational purposes. Okay, you can format this. So if I say, okay, I can format to a Kai or CD, EMU or all these different Roland, SyncLab or everything like that. Uh, you can eject things, do that. Um, the reference manager I'll explain later, but that enables you to take, like if you remember our battery file that had bad links, you could relink them with translator really easily. Here's our auto sampler. So this is how you get into that. You just go auto sampler. And now to explain what the auto sampler is, translator typically converts files, uh, instrument files or bank files, or even sample files into different formats. So it takes things that are already formed and converts them into something else that's already formed. But what, what if you have a contact file that's encrypted off a commercial library? Or what if you've got a sampler, external, uh, not a sampler, but a synthesizer like a, a Roland JV1080, or, a, or you've got like a Cork Triton that has a whole bunch of cool sounds in it. They're not samples, but they're uh, ROM-based uh, things. You can automatically sample those and convert them into any format you want. Uh, leveraging the translator's conversion engine, which is developed by Chicken Systems. So you can see the auto sampler. Again, I'm not going to go through this in any great detail, but uh, what it does is that you say, okay, here's the MIDI out port, and we're going to send out MIDI signals to play notes. Here's our audio in port, uh, the sample rate we've got it set to. Um, the output format, you can see, look at all those formats. Contact, EXS, Structure, SFZ. No other auto sampler even comes close to having this many formats involved. So you can see all these things, even Akai, Roland, everything like that. Um, you can say where they get put. With Contact, you can say this is the version we want written. Um, you can, uh, here's where you dictate, okay, I want D's and A's. C and the G and you can see all the notes that you're gonna you're gonna convert how many programs how many velocities uh, the name of the program and a few esoteric things recording the input level how long we say eight seconds but let's say four seconds uh, the threshold in which the recording starts processing you can add some loop points um, you can do a crossfade shoot you can make it one shot you can normalize proportionally a whole bunch of things you can say I want to do AIFs you want them to be 24 bit you want just mono you know on and on and on uh, and then you have templates etc and then once you're getting ready you just hit record and then there you go but this is where the auto sampler is based uh, okay um, there's a couple of other esoteric things there's the add to favorites and then the preferences and the format preferences. Notice there's, uh, we might as well talk about the preferences here. The, uh, there's two areas of preferences. One is just the ge general preferences of different things having to do with translations. And then the other preference section is the format section, uh, format preferences. Uh, let me show you the general preferences first. And we saw this before. You've got general and destination locations, single sample map, uh, and all these bias, which is a real powerful function, um, wave player options, you can design it there. Uh, and of course the audio MIDI stuff. And then format preferences, you can see how different this is. This is for every format that we 
do. So if you want to change the way your rolling stuff gets converted out of or converted into, you've got all the stuff here. Um, we've got videos on all this, so just that's where you'll check all that out. Um, you can restore default settings. This is that's trashing the preferences, and I just did that. Um, the help. You, here's your help content. So oop, there's our there's our manual. So there it is. You can just if you get lost in anything, just you can look in our manual. The uh, troubleshooting is also the manual. It just goes to the troubleshooting page. Bug reports is very important. There's don't be surprised. Uh, don't be surprised if something crashes or when you're converting something, something goes wrong. And we would like you to report any bugs to us because that's how we make our program better. And so clicking on this opens up your browser, goes to our website, and goes to our bug reports page, which is right here. And all you have to do is fill out your name, email address, the date. This is for spam purposes. Um, the translator version number, which it already fills in for you. The platform, these, you say your subject, crashed, converting MPC to EMU, and then to explain what it is. And the source file is very important to include. So you go, okay, I'm going to choose the file that screwed things up. So it was this file, it was this gig file, so there it goes. Puts it right there and says, okay, this is the file. And then when you submit the report, it will upload that for you. Okay, let's get back to the translator. So that's bug reports. Uh, you can go to the translator homepage. You can check for updates. Yep, this is the latest version of this writing. Um, when translator starts up, it will check automatically if there's an update and tell you and allow you to automatically upload it if there's a new version. Uh, format status, just in case you're interested. You can see the status on different formats that we convert. Oops. And the online documentation, which may be a little bit different than the one that's supplied with translator, may be more detailed. Support, you can do a form, you can chat. This is kind of nice, look at this. You can instantly chat with us. You can put your name, your email, your message, and then chat with us. And somebody will usually, be, if it's in within business hours or even outside of business hours, there'll be a representative there to chat with you. Okay, and also notice the support stuff is here too. You can even email us. And there's the splash screen, and etc. like that. Um, as I showed you, there's a lot of context things. You can even burn uh, virtual drives on the Mac at least. You say, I want to burn this to CD, and you can do that. That's only Mac. Uh, you can format the virtual drive. Again, you can get the info. Um, you can refresh the object, and you can do that. Um, the right side has pretty much the same thing. This is a little expanded. A lot of these you won't see in your things, but it's just on our machine. You can uh, pretty much all these things uh, mimic what the systems uh, thing does. The Windows one is very expanded. It's it's just like it. So that's really handy. Well, this has been a long video, but I hope you've gotten a, a good general sense on how to navigate around Translator 6 and how to work with it. I hope you see how powerful it is, is that you can not only convert instruments, you can play instruments, you can view what's inside your material. It's just kind of like a very comm big command central for all your instruments, banks, and samples. You can have full control of what you're doing instead of opening this sampler and that sampler, etc., etc., etc. So, hope you enjoy it. Have a happy day and happy sampling.